I've been asked to talk about this bicycle. Um, the guy taking the photographs here um, has a long history of me riding bikes and bike, riding bikes together all over the spot. It's a 26 inch wheel bike basically because I had 26 inch wheels on the bicycle I had before which was uh, an old orange I broke uh, during lockdown. Exploited the cost of second hand uh, cycle parts, broke it and I have to admit I always wanted a titanium frame. Could never afford one. Still can't afford a titanium frame, but I've got this. It's um, a 2000, early 2000s, I think it's about 2003, Airborne Mosquito, which is made in America. They are basically a bit of a Cinderella frame, a Cinderella cycle. In its day, uh, this manufacturer made the bikes for the US Olympic team. Uh, they never really sort of hit the scene big over here, really. Uh, Airborne is still in operation. I think the company has been bought out by venture capitalists. Um, they make bikes, but the bikes are made under license in the Far East. As I said, this one has been handmade in America. It's very nice. It's not the lightest of titanium bikes, and it lacks a lot of the water jet cut or laser jet cut fillets and, and uh, brackets and gussets and doodads. But it does what it says on the tin, and it will probably last me longer than my lifetime. Um, with the advent of backpacking, I had a conversation with a friend of mine who started doing some backpacking. As we got older, it seemed like a much more sedate way of getting about. We always like getting out into the outward, uh, into the outdoors, um, and we've always liked camping. Uh, a bit more time on my hands, uh, so I thought. I'll try build a backpacking bike. This frame came up, as I said, it was on a, um, an internet auction site, and I managed to get this for quite a bargain sum, as I thought. I think it was about £400. I had most of the bits, as I said before, on my previous 26 inch rigid bike. Uh, I didn't want to put 26 inch suspension forks on the front of this, mainly because of lightness and durability problems ongoing. I think. Um, it will be harder and harder to find 26 inch wheel parts, let alone 26 inch wheel forks. This was an XL frame and I needed a long steerer too. So I couldn't really source suspension forks or justify the expense. Um, got on a, a nice, very informative thread on one of the cycle sites on, um, on, the, on the internet and saw an American guy had fitted some 29er carbon forks um, to one of these. And on paper and in the pictures, it seemed to work just fine. So um, I plumped for a pair. Uh, these are they're made in the Far East, like most things nowadays. Exotic 29 inch carbon forks, rigid. They have uh, an inch and an eighth steerer. They have a 10 mil dropout um, and they're fork mounts. And as you can see, really a 26 inch wheel goes in there quite nicely. You'd never know. The frame was adjusted for um, medium to longer travel forks in the first place, certainly medium travel forks, so 29er just keeps the geometry right at the front. Um, this was all done on a budget, I take it you gather that. Um, so I looked at what other people were buying and um, I saw these pod sacks. We had a look at those, um, ordered some up, they were really cheap for what they are. Um, the bike's not packed at the moment, these are just as it stands, I just whipped it out of the the um, the house just to, to make this video really it was a spur of the moment thing so a lot of older parts on an older frame taking advantage of some of the newer lightweight backpacking gear that is out there certainly a lot of the lighter weight camping equipment um, insulated kit mats sleeping bags stoves everything has shrunk dramatically with the passage of time as i've got older um, early days of Polaris, you'd be cycling around with a block of flats on your back. Now it's just a hydration bladder. I know what Simon, Simon can, uh, can can care with that. In this trim, it's a couple of packs on the bike, a hydration bladder, and you're good for a night at least, probably a couple of nights, um, unsupported. Uh, that's more or less it. As you can see, there's no, there's no whistles or bells on it. It's all second-hand parts. I've stuck with the Hope brakes and the Hope hubs, which have always proved bulletproof to me. There are lighter ones, slicker ones, there are dearer ones. Everything has been done on a budget. 
um, it rides really, really well. The titanium frame just needs to be ridden to be believed, to be honest with you. Um, I'm very comfortable. H bars on the front, which are a, a recent sort of invention from the backpacking brigade in America. The famous ones being Jones bars, which are fairly expensive. I'm sure they're worth it, but fairly expensive. These ones are Fu Manchu bars, which uh, were marketed by Outkit. Uh, they are not made anymore, but I managed to get a set of these new old stock. All went together. It's very relaxed, nice upright riding style, and uh, so far I'm really happy with it. I look forward to doing quite a few more miles on it. Cool. Thanks Ivan. Comment, like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.